and they have some websites, and they have some infographics to look at. Because research requires, obviously, not just depth, it requires breadth, eventually. And um, information is not knowledge, it's they've got to sift through the facts and only some things will stick. They've got to start choosing. That, that's always my keyword on the board, choosing. I say a library user, a good library user, has to choose because you can't do everything. And sometimes the overwhelming dilemma of what to choose gets to them. So research guides limits that and that's, that's quite good. And so that leads me on to Encyclopedia Botanica, which we use as our referencing tool. And I know um, Sarah was telling me about a great referencing tool which I'll ask her to, to mention the name of it in a moment. This is one of the ones we use, um, which is Encyclopedia Botanica, and it's just so straightforward. It's great. You put in your picture, you click Harvard Reference Site, Harvard Reference, and it's got all the things we saw last year that we wrote together on Georgia O'Keefe. So it is great, and I can see that it doesn't have to be long and laborious. It just can be part of what they do. So quickly courses into leaving, where obviously Elizabeth and Robert Bjork call it into leaving and quickly quotes them. So we teach many topics in parallel, along with spacing that we looked at to help with the cognitive working memory. You can actually, using the research guides, you can really layer the way they taught. And again, each week, the teacher will be using this in the lesson as well, because there's a lot to get through. So it's a really good help for them. This reminds me of what Kate said yesterday um, about build it, they will come. Give the teachers resources, they will use them. Oh, make them meet your own ends. So I do send that resources and say, hey, can you use this for an hour in your class, perhaps? In, or during snack time, can they go on the library, on the research guides, can they use it? And they do. So they're repeating the concepts all the time. So by year six, they moved on to these, the, the last, last but one concept, which is breadth as well as depth of research is important. That's the other thing I want them to master. Only three objectives in four years, but it took a while to get there. So in year six, what we do, we take our original list and we set up carousel stations, because they don't really know what they're doing now. So they work together and they move around the room. We have a newspaper station, we have an interview station, where hopefully we can get live people in interviews. And we have images set up, they can go online. Um, hopefully somebody brings this artifact, which is always good fun, some medals for the World War II, and they work collaboratively to think about the best way of resourcing it, and it does not have to be perfect. I'm not looking for the semicolon and the data to publish and everything in the right place. I'm looking for the concepts to be in the right place. I'm looking for mastery of understanding. And this is, I'm almost there. This is the, one of the outcomes. Now, this wasn't from my year, because I'm pretty much taking pictures of kids' work. This is from the previous librarian, Slash Fisher. And it, this is, I don't know if you can see, it's the Battle of Coos. And the, the student on their project, from their research, has made this tank. And I don't even quite see it, but they've referenced the photographs underneath, and they've referenced what they read, and there's a reference down here as well. And they've actually got the concept, and they're proud of showing off how much research they have done. And I'm going to leave you with a final quote. I've got one more slide, really. Um, it's, I'm going to read it out to you quickly. It's greater depth describes the child's depth of understanding, not the quantity of what they can remember and recall. Greater depth involves non-standard learning, which means in a variety of ways. You have to come at it from many angles over the four years. It's got to be non-routine, you have to surprise them. It has to be rich, it has to be layered, sophisticated, interconnected, and very important, it has to be problematic for them to solve and learn. So if you think of the analogy of the car, I would say that they leave your six, most of them, hopefully, with more than basic understanding. They have now understood the concepts behind referencing of an academic integrity. And they are moving into advance, advancing. They understand it, they start to do it automatically. Now, for them to go on to a deep understanding, 
I hand over to my colleague in the senior library, Kim, who then takes on that, that's it. So she, obviously then they go into much more depth, they go into academic research, wealth and resources there, and they go going on to things like their EEs and their EPQs. But they are going up with a mastery of the concepts of academic integrity. Uh, good that um, 
the library, the library is also, uh, you know, we support, we support it too. Uh, when I say reaching out, this way so that we might take the library or we might take our information out to, to others. We have some mobile libraries and um, collections. We go to the middle school spaces um, three times a week, and um, sorry, twice a week, and then uh, once a month we take a, di a diversity LB LGBTQ collection to um, to the middle school. We go to the Chinese pots um, as a request from the teachers to go there three times a week. We have a collection in the primary school clinic, and we also have one in admissions that the library staff are responsible for.